In a general chemistry course, we study how elements are arranged within the periodic table into different groups or columns, where the elements of each family tend to have similar characteristics and properties, just as the members of a family of persons share many traits in common because they are related. In this sense, the elements of group 1 are an excellent example to illustrate this periodic classification because of the relevant similarities in both chemical and physical properties. All elements of the group 1 share the same outer shell electronic configuration NS1 and they have a great tendency to form ions plus 1 to achieve the noble gas configuration. All elements of the groups are reactive metals with low value of the first ionization energy, which decreases as you down along the group. They react vigorously with water producing hydrogen gas and they also react with most non-metals. With halogens, they, the reaction is vigorous and even explosive in some cases. When freshly cut, they show a lustrous metallic appearance that tarnishes rapidly in the presence of air by the reaction with oxygen and moisture. They need to be stored under oil in order to prevent the oxidation of the metals. Due to the high reactivity, they are found in nature in combination which contain the metal with oxidation state plus one, most of which were well known from ancient times. However, the discovery of the uncombined element it was not possible until comparatively recently. It was at the beginning of the 19th century, in 1807, when a British scientist, Humphrey David, was able to isolate metallic potassium first and then sodium through an electrolytic process of molten caustic potash and molten caustic soda. It was in 1917 when lithium was discovered by J.A. Affetson, while the two next elements of the group, rubidium and cesium, were discovered in 1961 and 1960 respectively. The last element of the group, the radioactive francium, was discovered in 1939 by Marguerite Perry, who named the element in honor of her country, France. Sodium and potassium are the most abundant elements in the group, occurring widely at salts such as chlorides. Lithium, on the other hand, is less abundant and occurs in minerals such as spodumene, which is the main source of this element. Rubidium and cesium are rarer than the thetic metal counterparts. Francium occurs in minus traces in the nature through the rare branching decay of the actinium 200 and 27 in the uranium 235 series. The alkaline metal, just like other metals, conduct heat and electricity, but they have a completely different appearance of what one could expect when examining metals. As we have previously seen, they can be easily cut by a knife. They all are really soft with lower melting points that decrease as we move down in the group. Behavior attributed to the very weak metallic bonding. The weakness in the bonding can be understood on the basis of both their big side, since they are the biggest element of each row, and their electronic configuration because they only contribute to the molecular orbital band with one electron. Consistent with this, their low density are far less than the typical density of a metal. Lithium, for example, has a density of one half the density of water. One important characteristic of alkali methyl is that each of, the, of them emits light of a particular color when the methyls of a compound containing the methyls is heated in a flame. These colors are so related with each element that flame tests are commonly used for the identification of alkali methyls. The color is because the energy of the burning gas provokes the promotion of the electron in the outer valence cell to excited state, which finally returns to the ground state, giving off the extra energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. The frequency of the radiation falls in the visible part of, of the spectrum, which gives to each metal a characteristic color. The observed colors are crimson for lithium, yellow for sodium, lilac for potassium, violet for rubidium and blue for cesium.